uh, how we can read from pain uh, the problem in our body. We know that we want the pain gone. So that's what, all, all that we want. Um, because if the pain goes, we are able to do therapy and then get out and about, uh, wake up refreshed and have energy for all day long. Mm-hmm. We won't know for the delays because it's, <laughs> it's painful. We feel our strengths returning. We want to feel our strengths returning and do more things in our life. So that's my starting point, why I'm doing this webinar, why I'm here with you. And I'm going to teach you this by showing you that the way we understand pain, in particular in chronic fatigue syndrome, is wrong. That I want to teach you that why pain should not be fixed with toxic chemicals and uh, the natural way to approach and treat pain. So I hope you come out today with these three things. And here is what you learn. So why pain occurs so you can prevent it. How to see a solution where others see a problem. To read what is happening in the body so that by observing your skin, your face, uh, the color of your face, and, and also the fluids of your body, how you sweat, how you go to the toilet, so you can source the cause of pain. And how? With the diet and the herbal medicine, you can, produce, uh, you can reduce pain and start feeling better from today if you start applying it. So there's also something that we always use, which is this uh, uh, system of investigation, which is part of my diagnostic tools, which is a little test where we ask in questions. And that's what I want you to get familiar with, uh, because if later you want to to book a call with me, we will do this test and we will talk about uh, all these little symptoms that can give us uh, some uh, clues about uh, what's happening in your body. But let me first introduce myself. So my name is Tommaso Perigo and uh, I am a researcher and therapist in chronic fatigue syndrome based in UK, London. Um, I teach at the College of Naturopathic Medicine and other institutions. And I practice uh, in London or online, and I have clients uh, therefore in the UK, in Europe, because also I'm Italian, <laughs> so I go from there, and in the USA. You can tell from my accent, I guess. So for the past four years, I've been uh, researching chronic fatigue syndrome and helping people suffering from it. And with my clients, we achieve excellent results. And so I started gaining depth experience, not only in how to treat it, but in all the steps required to support uh, the clients. And I want to share this with you today. So first question is, are results to reduce or get rid of pain in chronic fatigue syndrome possible? Well, if you have pain, you might have it at, all, at certain times. If you have pain, you might have it at all times. Pain can be at different intensity and hopefully if you have it at all times, it's kind of low intensity, not always strong. And the location is multiple and sometimes uh, unpredictable. The quality, mostly, according to my client, is uh, deep and diffuse, but may vary a lot. It can be also sharp, burning, or piercing, depending on what, what's happening and what the things that you do during the day. In the past three months, I had three current cases that are still current in which pain at high intensity was gone within a week of treatment. For one client, which is a female around 50, the pain has gone away almost entirely now that they are on week 11 of the treatment. For one client, which is a female of 40, so slightly younger, pain has returned on the third week in a milder form. So first was very intense, then it diminished, and then it came back a little, and we are monitoring the progress. If for one client male, which is very young, pain uh, has gone away entirely after a three months treatment, uh, but then he had a very bad fallbacks uh, in the diet and uh, lifestyle because he's 22 and he gets uh, a lot of friendship that are not right. And we treated it again and it's gone again in seven days. So not only he came back but, uh, for other reasons, but he, he was able also to, to send him back again, which for me is very important to show you that is not a condition that you have to keep forever to keep the pain. You can get rid, and if it comes back, you can still fight it back again. What are these three cases teaching me? That the pain is dependent by the changes that we do in our fluids of the body. 
that the pain can be diminished substantially in its impact without using the drugs, because that's what I did. And the pain could be resolved in different types of people. So different ages, female, male, with different bodies and different needs. So I, I always I like to take out the swimmer uh, as my picture. Uh, imagine a swimmer that's swimming in very clear water. It will go very fast, no? Um, and that's the picture that I imagine us with a perfect body, uh, we should swim in, we should like be the swimmer in a, in a very nice clear water. So our body performing correctly, nicely with the correct flow, right temperatures. Um, and I want to also connect uh, your imagination with the idea that we are made of fluids uh, constantly. So uh, all the way our body, this picture is quite accurate. It says that we have 60 or 65% of our body is fluids, the other is solid. And you can see that the various organs, so the brain is 83% made of fluids. The eye is 95%, which is incredible. So, and the heart, 75%, the muscle, mass, other muscles, 75%, et cetera, et cetera. Our blood is 94% of fluid. This is a more scientific slides where you can see the same distribution. So it's going to confirm where 40% is solids and 60 fluids. And then it tells you more, what, what, where is this fluid? And most of it is in the cellular in the cell of our body. So in this little thing, there is fluids. Um, and the other is around it, like here, and then in the blood. Just to, to have an idea of how much we are made of things that are run around it like fluids, and then they can be more dense and becoming tissue, becoming stronger, becoming an organ, and becoming even bones. Because bones is the mineralization, the loss of fluids and becoming very hardened and mineralized. So again, we have this image, but imagine instead of the swimmer swimming in, in very nice clean waters, you will present yourself in this situation where you actually, your fluids are slow moving. They are, here it looks muddy, but basically they are full of toxins or um, um, chemicals that has to be, uh, they have to be thrown out, but they are not uh, have been yet. And so the circulation, the quality of the fluids is very difficult. Imagine all these fluids surrounding every organ of the body in a, and they are not in the right uh, quality. What could be the response of our body? What could be the action, the performance of our body? And for me, this situation is very important before I approach and show you what are the current treatments, because this thought that the fluids are in our body and they are very important for the performance of the body is not even closely uh, taken care of by current approaches in, uh, in chronic fatigue syndrome. So for example, let's look at the therapeutic journey. So you go to the GP up here, it's a bit tiny, but don't worry, I can show you now in big, bigger uh, format. So you go to the GP and then sometimes you have three three solutions. And these are coming from uh, specialized papers that I can give you the reference if you need, of people that actually study what happened average to a person looking to solve chronic fatigue syndrome. So the first case, the, doc, you, the GP says, okay, you must go to the rheumatologist. Then after three months say, no, 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 you need to go to the cardiologist because you have panic attacks, you have these kind of uh, pal palpitations. Then he sends it to the neurologist because you always have pain then maybe, maybe it's a disease, so the infectious disease expert, or maybe to the endocrinologist because you have mood changes, or maybe your blood is sick. So they, you try all of these solutions. I don't know if it was your experience, maybe yes, maybe not, but most of the people end up in this situation. But sometimes you're lucky and you, they decide to send you to the early arthritis expert. And this guy, and I put it on purposely, very teeny tiny, because it's impossible to understand what that means. But they send you to do tests of blood count, uh, uh, autoantibody profile, anti-nuclear antibodies, uh, extractable nuclear antigen. They check you out with very expensive tests. And you go magnetic resonance or spinal uh, magnetic resonance imaging, all sorts of things to try to understand the mystery of your illness. 
currently there are more people getting a bit more aware of chronic fatigue syndrome. So they, they send you maybe to the chronic fatigue syndrome specialist, which is more normal because it gives you still some tests, but not as many as the second one. So the thyroid function, the calcium level, magnesium, vitamin D, and then they go uh, to give you some graded exercise program, advice in pain management, and then they give you some drugs. So are these processes working? We are here sometimes at 20 years with chronic fatigue syndrome and or 10 years or maybe just two years. And we have been through all of this. And the question is, is the following. The first one is confusing because it has no aim and no direction. First, the, the rheumatologist, then the neurologist, so all this stuff. It, it's so confusing because then you have to put the puzzle together, piece of the puzzle together. Then the second is a recipe, recipe for financial disaster. To do some two magnetic resonance, probably you need to ask for a loan. And so it's really difficult and also is not sure that it has a direction either. But, and because it's an investigation way too big for, uh, for, for being possible to do on a daily basis with the people that have chronic fatigue. The third case, which is the most approachable, is not resolving the issue because it promotes a damage limitation. So you say, don't move, contain yourself, don't exert too much, maintain your status quo, and then still gives you drugs for suppression of the symptoms. So you have pain, it gives you some painkillers. Um, so I hope this was kind of a journey that uh, you understood. And I think it is coming from the experience of an average of uh, in, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome people, sufferers in the UK. Uh, let's look at what happens when you have pain. So pain is always like you have pain, you have uh, heat, you have redness and swelling. This, these four things is what characterize pain. Um, and they are classic manifestation of when you are inflamed, which is the response of the body to something that is wrong. Then what happens is that all these things, wherever it happens in the spine, in the muscles, in the tendons, in the ligaments, people go and check it if you need the, uh, a surgery or something, something major. Most likely you don't because you don't have uh, any major uh, uh, evident uh, uh, um, <laughs> I'm stuck. Uh, some evident like broken bone or something. So they will say, try to treatment to reduce the pain. So uh, the intervention is not surgical, but it's probably most likely chemical. So the common methods for the pain resolution, they give you a uh, suppression of the local mechanism of alert. So if I have a problem here and my pain is here, they give me something that actually is making my area numb. The second mechanism is that instead they make you all numb. And so you're, you're fine for the time being that you're suffering pain. So for example, you, you have spine pain and they give you the non-steroidal, uh, the NSAIDs, which have some consequences because they have some side effects. They bring gastritis, heart problem, mood changes, depression, low energy. That's listed in, in their website. You have inflammation, arthritis, IBS, they give you corticosteroids, but you still have fluid retention, mood swings, memory problems, uh, upset stomach, and maybe weight gain. If you have fatigue, muscle tension, some people su suggest to give antidepressant with the result that you might feel agitated, shake your anxious, feeling and being sick, and, and et cetera, and so on. I just put it now the same thing that I read you in bold to notice that all those things in bold are actually some signs of chronic fatigue syndrome or even fibromyalgia. So you have a lot of things that are connected with the drugs that you're using to solve some pain, but creates other problem somewhere else. Going back to my fluids, my passion. So do you remember the swimmer? So here we have, uh, the conventional treatments is applied to you. And the brown thing is the picture of your fluids that are not working well. They are muddy, let's say like that. 
if you get drugs that maybe resolve some problems, some issues here and there, but those side effects and the, the waste of these drugs are still in your body. Your body hasn't managed to take it out because your fluid is low, they're muddy, they're not performing well, they are maybe stuck somewhere or they're you lack influence. So after six weeks of the conventional treatment, you see how brown is becoming the situation. That's the, the type of picture that I'm trying to, to propose to you, that fluids are ignored, the state of your fluids, but they are 60% of our body. And they basically contain all the immune system, all the nourishments, all the signals from the nerves, all the signals for the hormones to change our mood and provide our muscle, muscle actions. They surround our muscles. So when we have muscle pain, we might probably have to think about it, what's the condition of our fluids, not just blame in the muscle. So is it possible to resolve pain without creating further intoxication of the fluids? Are there remedies that can help uh, change the fluids in such a way that the change is beneficial to the tissues, to the organs, and to the whole body? What's the answer? For me, the answer is yes, it is possible. So let's look at the problem from the holistic pers physiology perspective. And I want to give you these three points to overcome pain, shall we? <laughs> so the first point is that most people currently suffering chronic fatigue syndrome is, uh, and, and they are the one that I can see, I call them power machines because they're super hyper-functioning. They're, they're really, their body is very active, even though the fatigue should probably seem that is, they are not so. And why, why is that? This is the result of a lot of tests that I'm doing. This is when I ask all my clients, what are your symptoms in certain particular area? And if you look at the bottom right, it is when they answer to me that they're all drained out of fluids, they are really in pain, they have tenderness, they have swelling. So the bottom right is where the pain mostly is. But that is not the pain, it's actually the hyperfunction. So when they are really performing hard, but they are struggling to, to deliver the things that they need to do. And you can see all of them, they're all chronic fatigue syndrome uh, sufferers. Look at that they all have the red bit at the bottom right. And this I showed you in the past webinar that everybody is a power machine. So, and which is a good thing in chronic fatigue syndrome because if you're, it, it removes the idea that you cannot do anything, that your body is broken. Your body is not broken, it's working, but it's not delivering properly. It is not performing well. But now I want you to notice that for each, state of hyperactivity that brings to tenderness and pain, there are always at least one or two other problem imbalances in the other areas. So for this person, she had problem of stagnation, of tension, of dryness. This person, she has problems of too much relaxation of the tissue, of tension and dryness. These other have uh, dryness, tension, stagnation, and relaxation at the same time. Of course, they have a lot of pain and a lot of struggle because the other part, the other tissue are not responding. The body is a, a deficient in response in a lot of other areas. You get the picture, I hope. So how do we read pain from visible sign on our body? So we can do external observation. So you can look at your body and in particular the skin, let's say, and the coloration also of your face, of the hands, arms, and see, is it dry or is it clammy? Is it pale? Is it swollen? Do you have muscular tension? Or you can do internal observation. Do you feel that you have nausea? Do you feel like you're vomiting? Do you have a hangover feeling when you wake up? Uh, do you feel bloated? Or do you have mental tension? These are just pick and ch uh, cherry picks from the list of symptoms. And each observation teaches you about what's happening in the fluids of your body. Because if I see dryness on my skin, I know that the fluids are lacking or they are going to the inside of the body, not on the outside, like on my arms. 
If I see that I'm lacking, uh, my hairs are falling out, I lack lubrication in the scalp. If I see that I have swellings, I have bags, I have uh, uh, ankles, it means that I'm stagnating. The, my, the fluids of my body are not moving right. It's obvious because you see it's, it's, it's getting swollen. For each state of the fluids, there is a dedicated therapeutic approach already done for you because if you're swollen, we can drain you. If you're dry, we can lubricate you. If you're tense, we can relax you. Therapy is clear and can be assessed, developed, adapted, and refined. So let's say that I decide that we understand that you are stagnant and maybe uh, on the other side, you're also dry. What we're gonna do, we're using some remedies that can move your fluids, that can allow you to drain it better, and they bring also lubrication. These things are never considered in normal approaches because they don't care about the fluids. But those are the most important thing to treat, in particular, in the mysterious illness of chronic fatigue syndrome, which is not, but we can call it an illness of the fluids. The recovery can be achieved following the natural improvement that we are able to stimulate in the body. As I said, if you're stagnant, if you have swollen ankle, we create some stimulus that make your body automatically drain by itself. So what are the solutions to pain? First thing is to clear the fluids. So, um, oh, sorry, I've seen some question. Uh, I was not looking. Um, uh, thank you, Nicole. So we use clear, we clear the fluids. And to do that, we means that we try to clear obstructions in the body, in particular in the bowels. We remove the poisons, which is a detoxification that you can do mostly with the diet, but also with the herbs. And we try to reduce the potential fermentation and putrefaction of food waste, the waste of food that when you eat, we absorb the things that we need, but we try to eliminate the rest. But if the body is not able to eliminate properly, then you can have putrefaction and fermentation. So the first action will be clear the fluids. It's a long-term action, but it is very quick in its effect. Then you want to reduce the pain externally. So in herbal medicine, we have oil, smell, or steam that you can apply to immediately feel relief. I don't know if you ever tried to use oils, uh, prepared oils with herbal medicine, but herbal medicine is full of uh, uh, painkillers because it's able to, to relax the muscles or to have specific action on whatever you need to do. You can bring warmth, it can cool, it can make the, the, the tissue cringe. And so you can really work whatever you need for the particular pain. Or you can reduce it internally by drinking the, the herbs or eating the herbs. So you basically uh, absorb the herbs as fluids into your body they merge into the liquids of your body and they change them. How do they change them? Imagine when you have uh, the tea of Angelica. Angelica is a very warming plant. How does it make you warm? Because it enters the fluid and change it chemically. How chamomile makes you relax? Because it enters and it has an action of relaxants on the nerves. So the herbalists know exactly how to apply to the things that you need, the actions of the herbs. So these three things, quite simple. One is the diet, and the other is external or internal remedies made with the herbal medicine. So talking about clearing the fluids, the type of foods, what makes the fluids not well? Well, first of all, is the food waste, as we mentioned before. So the remains of the digestion. What is not absorbed must be thrown away, either with the bowels or either with the, with the kidneys or sometimes the lungs, sometimes the skin. Then you have uh, toxins that come in from the food or coming from uh, the air that we breathe, but also from our own uh, uh, internal environment. So when we are angry or when we are agitated, we create chemicals that need to be 
uh, clear of our, our body. Then when people have problems in the bowels, so that they are quite uh, stuck, maybe constipated, they can have food waste remaining there. And that continues putrefacting. Imagine our body is heating 40 degrees, um, 38 degrees every single day, 24 hours on. And so this, this matter is getting putrefacted, so it, it creates toxins. Every food that you eat should come out within 20 hours, but mostly the one we see every day in our toilet is not the food that we ate 20 hours before, but maybe 40 or 60 hours before. Same is for fermentation. Fermentation is the sugars remains that can create uh, uh, gas, bloating, and pain if they are left there for way too long time. Then there's also the lifestyle that can contribute to the quality of the fluids because if you don't move and you, if you cannot move, uh, you create a cycle where you um, don't allow your fluids to move and that makes things a little bit more difficult as well as the sleep patterns, because sleep is very important to, to make you clean every night. But if the sleep is not working well, then you also have problems. So all these factors need to be considered. But definitely three ways, through the diet and through the topical or internal uh, herbal remedies, you can act on the fluids and, and clear them. You can also have trauma or viruses, most likely in this period of our lives, that provoke a massive emergency in our body. And so you have a lot of things that have to be cleared in the fluids. You always remember this formula, so that your vitality is the power, the innate power that you have, minus the obstruction that you create uh, by living your life, by eating your foods, by going outside or by living with your family, relatives, and, and, and friends. So if your vitality is very low, there's something that is happening in your body that you cannot overcome the obstruction that has been created. So it's very important to understand what type of obstruction do we have? Is it matter or is it poisons? Is it more emotional? So we need to work on, on these things. If you want to know a bit about the foods, uh, the foods that are very good for you is always the same, is uh, starchless fruit and vegetables. Those are, you're gonna go for sure. However, the, in, the, in our therapy program, we, we direct it in a certain ways that help you clean and faster or adapt it to your current diet and see how we can give you the advantages of foods cleansing without it, the, disrupting uh, your, your habits. So, Starches, fruits, and vegetables are the most important one because they, they stimulate the vitamin processes in your body. They have minerals and electrolytes, which is minerals uh, with an electrical charge, which stimulates the movement of the fluids. They have a lot of fiber, which is what we call the broom, you know? <laughs> they clear your bowels with an action like uh, the one of the broom. And you want to have a non-stimulant food so coffee or uh, tein, they're not the best uh, at this stage because they make you an altered perception of your body. Instead, you want to really know when you're cleansing or what's happening to your body. And most and for all, non-acid forming foods. So if you have foods that leads to toxicity, those are not good because they will make the job a little longer. So here's the picture. If you stay at least three weeks on these type of foods, mainly, you will already produce radical changes to your experience of pain because it will help you remove the obstruction and clear the fluids. So it will reduce the inflammation, which we know that is the expression of pain. It will introduce uh, the right nutrients and the processes that are stimulated to restoring the right balances in the body. So if you remove a clogging and obstruction and promote elimination, your tissues will gain elasticity, color, tone, and responsiveness. And that's what we want also because in chronic fatigue, not only you want to remove the inflammation, the pain, but you also want to bring back the energy and the ability to do things. How, how pain will disappear? Because fluids that do not move 
bring about toxins accumulation. It's like you're trying to clear and they're not moving. So how can you clear if they don't move? Toxins allow inflammation to occur and you experience pain. But when the fluids regain their flow, the correct temperature and the electrical charges that are coming also from the food, but also from the herbs, the tissues will thrive and inflammation will never start. Remember this, that the tissues and organs are immersed into the fluids. The fluids are their source of food, of protection, communication with the rest of the body. How, what do we do with the herbs? So again, I want to show you the concept first, which is that if you have a tissue problem, so I'm feeling cold and I'm all pale, I have herbs that can bring warmth and nourishment. If I'm too relaxed, I can use herbs to stimulate and make me contract. On the opposite side, if I'm too tense and contract, I have herbs that can stimulate the relaxation and the nervous tension and strengthening my nerves as well. If I'm down or stagnant, so I have a lot of fluid accumulation, I can have herbs that can increase the speed of the circulation. They're amazing. How do they do that? They just really move the blood faster. And then they increase the drainage so that you can clear faster as well. If you're dry or atrophied, you can use uh, lubrication. Certain plants have a very good quantity of water and, or oil, and they can generate a uh, beneficial effect. Yes, there is, Federica, in a, in a minute when we we'll do the live session. Thank you for asking. Um, then when, when you feel heated or overstimulated, which is the case of pain, you can have cool, relaxing, pacing herbs that are able to create this stimuli so that your body stabilizes. So pain can come from any of the above uh, pathways. Pain is resolved when the imbalances are reduced. So if you're damp, stagnant, dry, tense, using herbal medicine and more efficient foods, we achieve a regeneration of the fluids. The herbs gently merge into the fluids of the body and change the tissues that are immersed into the fluids. So you're watching this, this uh, at your computer watching this webinar, you heard how it works and you could agree that recovery from pain, I hope you agree now that it is possible, but only if you move from A to B. So let's look at this picture. The current situation is here, A, and what you want to become is the B on the other side. You might have uh, high intensity pain or you might have low intensity, diffuse and constant pain. Depends maybe from the day as well. So what are the three steps that we need to do in the middle? First, you need to have immediate emergency intervention with oil screams or fast herbal remedies because if you're really at the stage that pain cannot make you do anything, we need to bring relief. There's no other way. But if you bring relief with something toxic, then you create a further problem down the line. So using herbs is an attempt to reduce the threshold of pain so that then you can start the step number three, which is the improvements through the diet and long-term herbal remedies that help you to eat faster and relentlessly so that you constantly improve the fluid of your body. So I think I have a little uh, picture that I want to show you, but these three steps are essential because you need to bring relief. And uh, luckily herbal medicine are powerful painkillers, as I told you before. Working long-term is even more fundamental because fluids must improve for the pain to go away. Herbs can really help alongside dietary changes to improve the body fluids, tissues, and organs performance. So from this particular picture, so the GP that sends you here or here or here, I wanted to show you this, that the conventional treatment leaves you in this condition. You remember the picture of the swimmers in the mud. In the natural therapy, you create, you starting from this situation of poor fluids, but slowly, you manage to arrive at this point. And that's when you don't feel anymore the pain. 
because otherwise it's always the same game. I take a medicine, I don't have the pain, then it comes back and I take a medicine and same game. Instead, you want to stop the pain, but also progressively remove the source of the pain, which is in the fluids. What I just show you is a test system. So we had an excellent result already achieved with many different persons. It's natural, it's safe, and it doesn't burden your fluids and with further toxins. It's a simple, clear therapeutic approach. I hope you understand how it works. It's pretty simple. And uh, it's quite easy to implement. It's just about making the right choices in the foods and then having uh, the right herbs. How, to take, how do you take advantage of this opportunity? So I have to run a clinic, <laughs> but I have uh, some free sessions that I leave uh, uh, every week for free calls. So I made available in my schedule a number of these calls. They are all 30 minutes. And you can book one at the time that, that you prefer until they are available. And they are absolutely free. So in the call, you can take the test with me, uh, a test where I can assess you exactly what are the problem of your fluid by asking specific question. It would be nice also to have you on Zoom if possible, but we can do it over the phone as well. And be mindful that it's a free service, so I have limited amounts. So if you want to book it, it's better to do it um, uh, as soon as possible. Actually, I'm actually giving you in the chat the link to the call. And how does it work? Basically, you go here and I show you is something like this. You will have a little calendar where you can choose uh, the time according to my availability. And then you, you choose if you want to do a phone call or Zoom. Zoom is nice because I can see your complexion and the color of your face. But if you don't want to do Zoom, we can do a normal call. Um, and then uh, nothing, then you put uh, your email, your details. And, uh, and that's how uh, you book the, the call. Um, in the call, we will, I will ask you a question of this kind. So I will examine your if your tissues are heated, are Tender, swollen and tender. Then I can ask you about uh, if your tissues are cold, dark and gray. And why I'm, I'm asking you this question? Because we will arrive at a picture like this. This is a case study of a person that I've done it before. And you can see these are all answers from the little questionnaire, which I also um, uh, connect with what I see when I talk to you. And, and I will ask you also about your medical history, your medical, uh, the current medication, etc. From this, we can have a picture of who you are in terms of pain and in terms of fatigue. And then we can find what is the best solution to take. And uh, if you, then we can go on and talk about it. Uh, so that's what, what we basically do as a free service so that you can understand if this therapy could work for you. Uh, I want you to learn a way to get better. I want to give you this for free. And so most importantly, to get back and trusting that there is a hope for recovery from chronic fatigue is not like something impossible. We just have to go through our three steps. And obviously that's my secret mobile. When you get your results, then I will be very happy if you tell uh, more people about this so that we can help more people. So what the call does for you, you will be able to explain your problems in depth and, and you can immediately learn what's, what's affecting you. And you will be able to have a private conversation, only half an hour, but still uh, it's a good amount of time. So you can ask questions in depth about your personal health issues. Uh, we will go through the history, your medical history, the tests that you've done, blood tests or any other type of checks and the current medication. So I'm sure that all the important checks are put in place so that when I give you the suggestion, uh, you, you know that it's founded on a... a quick but very uh, solid uh, medical observation. So the link is in the chat and book your time now so to ensure that you have a place this week because before the summer break, you know, you never know with families what happens. And now I would like to open up the, the live session so that we can chat a little bit.